painting is really a relaxing thing because it's you and the canvas and you're creating an idea, especially if it's just from your mind. You think of something and you just start painting it and you keep on going until the thing is, is finished. It uh, is very satisfying. Probably one of the most satisfying things I've ever done in my life. You're just doing it to relax and see something at the end result. For me, art is like a catharsis, a cleansing uh, kind of an experience. I suppose much like writing would be, photography would be, uh, that kind of thing. It's uh, something out, out here that you see and you identify with it in here and it comes out. And I think all of my life experiences and and pain and things like that probably has demonstrated in my work. You'd be amazed at when people look at my art, if, if somebody stops and it catches their eye, I've made that connection. Whether they buy the piece or not is inconsequential to me, but I've caught their eye and it stops them and it makes them think and I say, yes. And that's, that's the reward for me. And I like the uh, uh, use of uh, acrylic because you have, you can water it down to the point where it is just like using watercolor or you can use, use it thickened uh, for foreground for a little more texture. So you kind of daub it on there and it stands off a little bit and it gives you more shape. Say if you're doing a rock, for instance, or in this case a shoreline, you want those things to seem a little more meaty, a little heavier, and that's it's like it's called impasto. And I always I always stand back and look and see the progress of the painting. Have a sip of coffee in between. It tastes like I must have dipped my paintbrush in there a couple times. That's all right, though, it won't hurt you. Oh, let me uh, show you something else I've been working on. This one here, we'll just uh, set this aside to dry sufficiently. And here's a little. Uh, Another painting I'm working on, it was an idea I had a while ago and uh, I was fascinated with the uh, a crucifixion scene. So I've been working on a preliminary drawing. I like to just sketch a little bit here to so I have a kind of a guideline for my my brushwork on here so I know where the placement of uh, of the figures are. What I am envisioning is something that's going to contain a lot of color, uh, very much like uh, stained glass in a church window. Well, first of all, I'm Ralph Kaseya. I was born into a household, mom and dad, and, and uh, three older brothers. I was the youngest brother, I was the fourth one, and I was called Wayne. Even as a young child, I realized that our household was not a normal household. I had a father that drank, and uh, he would come home and, and argue with my mom. Eventually, it got to the point where the home was very dysfunctional. He actually beat my mother. So it's my fault. It's my fault. As a result, us children were removed from the home. Uh, my father was arrested. My mother went insane as a result, just retreating from life. And us four kids uh, ended up in an orphanage. So we were broken up as a family and, and that was life as we know it. And my oldest brother ended up in what they call a senior boys' cottage. My two older other brothers ended up in the junior boys' cottage, and then I was put in a uh, 
a place all by myself with other kids my age. That whole s situation, you just uh, have a lot of questions, you know. something out here. You know, God can do a lot in a person's life. Uh, but there are some things that go deep. And I'm a... Uh, 70 some years old and it it's still there. I like the use of uh, bright colors and I'm going to put a couple of those in my palette right now. There's blue, yellow, and of course uh, the red for the blood of Christ which was shed upon the cross at Calvary for us. I'm going to apply a, a little base color to the picture here to kind of get the start of it. A little tone on the canvas. It'll help me to solidify the drawing. Once I get painting this thing, it'll uh, take a better form. But you can see that just the application of this paint kind of gives you an idea of how the uh, figure is going to look upon the the cross here. Not perfect right now, it's not meant to be perfect. And you'll see how this all comes together later on. In the data winter, very cold up there in Wisconsin, uh, they pushed all the kids outside. It was very cold and, and the clothes I had on, it was a, a wool coat. Both of my shoes were loose from the top of the shoe and actually my feet were hanging out. Anyway, uh, I looked down uh, the sidewalk and my oldest brother was walking up the sidewalk. His job was to get the mail for the uh, orphanage, so I saw him coming up the sidewalk. I ran over to where he was to talk to him. And uh, he looked at me and he, I was coughing and he looked down at my feet and he saw that the bottom of my shoe with my socks and my socks were wet and he took his own shoelace out of his shoe and he cut it in half and he took the shoelace and actually tied the bottom to the top. When he left there he reported that I was coughing and stuff and actually I had pneumonia and uh, well immediately they got a hold of me and put me in a hospital. But uh, I'll always remember that, that thing that he did was uh, uh, tie, tying my, my shoes together. So they took me to the Children's Hospital in Milwaukee. And I was in there and stayed for a couple of days in the hospital for observation. And during that time, I just felt uh, a great need to see my dad. And I guess I put up a big enough fuss, they probably said, we better find his dad. So we didn't, we didn't know where he was, but they found him. And uh, I remember sitting there in his hallway on a bench, this hard bench in this hospital hallway and I must have waited for about an hour and all of a sudden he came around the corner and as he was approaching me he was walking from side to side and I could smell alcohol 
strong sense of alcohol, smell of it. And he walked up to me and he said, I'm going to tell you what life, life is all about. He took his index finger, stuck it up his nose. He pulled out some material and rolled it on his fingertip like this and flicked it off. And he says, that's what life is all about. And then he laughed like a maniac, <laughs> turned around. Walked out of my life. Three weeks later is when they came and told us that he was dead. And I maintain that God is only going to put up with so much. And he said, that's enough. Well, what I'm doing now is putting in some brighter color yellow here because there's going to be uh, light coming down from heaven, coming down from out of these darker clouds that I'm going to have up in here. Like I say, this is a creative process. I just love this. Love doing this. And I'm just going to put a little indication of where the red is going to go on this scene here. I think this is going to be a good painting. I love it. And of course on his feet, that blood did course down his body. That's the interesting thing about watercolor is uh, you let the, the water in the angle of the picture do its own thing. So you get a natural flow of uh, colors. There was a group of us guys that hung around in high school, dysfunctional group of guys, I guess typical of any high school. And we would do all kinds of things uh, imaginable, drinking, driving crazy. I remember one situation when uh, all the good times and the fun stopped. I was called into the office by the principal and he gave me the, the bad news. He said, you're not graduating with your class. He said, you don't have enough credits. And uh, I kind of like looked at him. It was no surprise to me. I'll tell you what, he said, if you come in here and sit in the desk, keep your mouth shut, he said, I will give you a diploma. So I had to go a half a year to school besides working. And he did give me uh, a diploma. I didn't, I didn't deserve it, but he knew my background because I had been in three foster homes and an orphanage. And he just said, you know what? He said, you, you don't have a chance. He said, I'm just gonna There are some outstanding people, outstanding people out there, and he was one of them. He didn't have to do that, but he did, and he gave me a diploma. Anyway, uh, I ended up getting getting married, and yeah, I wasn't even done with high school yet. And ended up getting married, and. Uh, uh, all my friends that I hang around, hung around in high school with, they were going on with their lives. Some guys were going to Vietnam. Other guys got married and, you know, we all got split up as far as uh, guys we hung around with. <clears throat> and uh, I was out there and like I had said earlier, uh, alcohol got a hold of me and uh, I was addicted for years and years and years. Uh, and I happened to be out one evening and I was drinking and headed home and on the way home was a friend of mine who was married. He lived uh, 
along the way there, so I thought I'd stop in there and get something to drink and pulled into his driveway. seen much of you since since I graduated. Yeah, it's uh it's been all right. Got anything to drink? Listen. There's something I got to tell you. I'm not the same guy you used to know. What are you talking about? I got saved, Ralph. I got saved. You you got saved? <laughs> what do you mean you got saved? And he explained it to me that he asked Jesus Christ to come in his life and save him, and that he was a Christian. Now, Ralph, <laughs> you're a what? Listen, I don't have anything for you to drink. Well, I guess I should be getting going then. Take it easy going home. I love you. Jesus loves you. I had never heard anything like that before. And I just kind of looked at him and I, I wasn't laughing. Fog was drifting in, and it got real thick out in, the, I was out in the country. And I got on this one road, and I knew this road like the back of my hand. I could race down that thing 80 miles an hour, 100 miles an hour. I knew every little bump in the road and everything. And I was going along, and it was foggy. I really couldn't see, but I really didn't care. I just was, that's how I thought about life. So. All of a sudden, uh, when I was driving along, all of a sudden I got this chill come over me and I couldn't explain it. It was just like the hair on the back of my neck stood up, the hair on my arm stood up, and I was, I was going about 80 miles an hour and I, all of a sudden I just backed off of the gas and I started putting on my brake and I was, not driving real, real fast. I was just like almost stopped and I came over this hill and there's a white van. The guy had an electrical problem or something and it was stalled right over the crest of that hill. And if I would have kept driving at the speed I w was, I would have ran right into the back of that thing. Probably got killed. And uh, later on I helped the guy push the van down the road so he could pull into this driveway and uh, hopped in my car and uh, took off and went home. And uh, that kept echoing in my head, Jesus loves you. And it was uh, quite a few years later, through a lot of trials and things, I, I finally got to the end of myself so to speak, and one early morning, I think it was like three o'clock in the morning, and uh, nobody was up.
looked at that track and I saw all that stuff. I was a sinner and I was on my way to hell. I knew I was going to hell if I'd die. And there was a prayer on the end of it. And uh, I said that prayer. Dear God, please have mercy on me. And I confessed myself as a sinner and I was sorry for my sin and I asked Jesus Christ come in my life and save me. And he did. And when I got done saying that prayer, I looked up. I said, Father. And I go back to that verse. It says, when mother and father forsake thee, then I will take thee up. And he did. I got saved that day. You know, I may not have had a father. I had a natural father. But now I have a heavenly father. And he cares about me. He loves me. Of course, when light comes and hits an object, it reflects off of that object like these, this ground down here. After I got saved, uh, almost immediately, uh, God was telling me to do things, different types of ministries. So I got involved in bus ministries to kids, inner city ministries, prison ministries, and after a while, opportunity came up when I moved down to South Carolina. And uh, this one fellow said, how would you like to come down to the rescue mission and give your testimony, how God saved you? And after I gave my testimony, it was like God was saying, this is what I want you to do. And what happened was down at the rescue mission in Greenville, they had a group of people down there. It was called the Overcomers. And it dealt specifically with addictions. And talked to one of the guys in the leadership, and he said, we need somebody to speak in the chapel. So I went down there and I spoke in the chapel. And when I would go up there and speak in front of these men, uh, it was, I told God, you help me say what I need to say. And he did that. And I've been doing this for nine years now. Every Monday, I go in there and give, talk to 80 men, give a message, message of hope, hope in Jesus Christ. And uh, Miracle Hill has the highest rate out of all the addiction programs for men not going back to their previous life. I know the deciding factor is them making a decision for Christ. It's, I'll tell you what, it's a, a miracle. Because I see men come in there, it's like a 28-week program, coming in there with their head between their legs, ashamed, and walking out at the end of the program, graduates with their head held high and looking healthy and clear-eyed and going back to their families and society as men. And that's what God has called me to do, and that's what I'm going to do as long as I have breath to speak, as long as I can crawl in there. I'm going to keep doing what He wants me to do. And I tell the man, I said, hey, if I can get saved and I can get turned around, I can get free of addiction, so can you. And I believe this, that God has taken me through everything in my life molded me for his glory. I praise, praise I don't think I'm gonna go any further with this because I, I think I consider this a finished painting. You have to know when to stop, how far to keep going, if you need to keep going, and I think this is pretty much uh, as far as I'm gonna go with it. So what I'll do now is I'm just gonna put a signature on this 
consider this a finished painting. So there you have it. Of course, you gotta end with a cup of coffee. That's the reward. So I can see, just like this art on the wall, I can see God painted a picture. Looks good with the mat on it, doesn't it? Makes all the colors pop. I love it. Looks like a church window. Stained glass. And that's what the name is. Church window.